Great morning, great morning, great morning, everyone. This is The Vessel, and my name is Mr. Beverly Knox Davis. I'm here just to share a moment with you of meditation and hopefully give you a little bit of something just to keep rising and going and being. Good morning, good morning, good morning. When you come on, please tell me good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you may be watching. Good morning, Miss Joyce. I hope you are doing well. Good morning, priest. Miss Joyce, I'll see you Friday night for decoration. Really excited about the Thanksgiving program for a brighter day. Priest, I will see you later this evening. We'll talk. Uh, to pass out the turkey you will fry. I'm so excited. Good morning. Good morning, John. Good morning, Michelle. How is everybody doing? Yes, when you come on, please tell me good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you may be watching. Yes, today we will talk about what seed have you planted to deserve the harvest. You ready for this? <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. I do not own the rights to this music by B.B. Winans. Laughter, just like a medicine. I love this song. Good morning, good morning. When you come on, please tell me good morning. Just like a medicine. Yes. Just like a medicine. Oh, yes. I love that song. All right. Let's go to God in prayer. Um, this message touches on so many different areas. Good morning, Melissa. I hope you're doing well. Um, touches on many different areas uh, and I just want to dive in just a little deeper and hopefully you'll be able to take something with you that will help you throughout this day. So to God be the glory. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you on this day. We thank you for the rain that falls from your heavenly skies. Lord, we lift you up and we magnify you in every single thing that we do. Lord, we love you for just allowing us to slumber on last evening with no hurt, harm, or danger. Lord, we thank you for protecting our homes and covering our children. Lord, we just love you on this day. Lord, we thank you for the teachings that you have left with us in our sword that we go forth with on a daily basis. Lord, I thank you. And for those that have not used your sword, Lord, oh my God, may they dust it off and open it up to see the glory that already lives within them that will shine even brighter through your word, through your teachings. Lord, we love you on this day and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So good morning, everyone. Good morning. You know, sometimes when you start talking about, you know, people's responsibility and what they should be doing, sometimes you won't get, you know, uh, the hooping and hollering. Maybe nobody even wants to hear what you have to say, but it is so very true that we have to understand what it is in the season of doing what is necessary to reap what the benefit is. So let's go right in. Um, the message today, what seed have you planted to deserve the harvest? You know, I had a conversation on yesterday with some ladies and it was so wonderful. Um, just to hear different parenting styles. You know, I'm hardcore. You're not going to play in my house. You know, you might get something zoomed at you, especially if you're acting like you don't hear me. <laughs> so it's just, um, I, I don't believe in not sparing a rod and, and, uh, and spoiling the child. I don't believe in any of that. You know, I do believe in different methods and, and how you plant um, an understanding in your children and then you know, even in a relationship as to how you present yourself up front. I don't believe in sending the representative. I don't believe in any of that. I just believe that whatever seed you plant, if you are your real person, if you are a stern parent, then you won't get the foolishness that will come your way. So let's look at God's uh, message here. 
Um, and again, the message, what seed have you planted to deserve the harvest? Good morning, good morning. Um, when you come on, please tell me good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, first verse that I want to share, and I use the English Standard Version for social media purposes. Please go back and read the others, especially the Message Bible. It is amazing. Um, Psalms 126 and 6 out of the English Standard Version says, He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. So let's let's look at that. Let's look at that. You know, it's almost like, oh, I don't want to go to work today. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. But yet you get up and you go. You do what you have to do. You understand your responsibilities in it. But then it's like, hey, when Friday shows up and you get that paycheck, you know, if you got a little something left over for you after you pay the bills, oh my goodness, are you happy? You are rejoicing that you have a little something left for yourself. So yes, we may get up out of the bed in the morning and not want to go and not want to do what our responsibilities are, but we must. And then in the end, when we see the reward on the other side of that thing, it is the most joyous time. You will be shouting and happy and hee hee ha ha and but see, you had to put the work in. People don't understand. If you don't plant seed in good dirt, then you don't get what's wonderful back. That's how this works. So please go forth. You know, even if you have to grumble just a little bit, it's okay. Understanding that you still got to press. You still got to keep moving. You still have to discipline your children. You still have to pay those bills. You still, you still you still. So understanding when David wrote this in the, the, the book of Psalms, it is just to help us understand, hey, you might go out weeping. You know, you know that you have to, to bear the grunt of sowing this seed. But then when you come home, you're going to be shouting and you'll have what it is that you need to go forth and be everything that God had you to be. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So the next passage I'd like to share, Luke 8, 4 through 18. And it's a little bit um, a little bit lengthy, but I want to share this because it, it speaks on every single thing that I said earlier in regards to sometimes you don't want to get up and go. You don't want to have to do the work, but you must in order to reap the benefit. So in Luke 8, 4 through 18, and this is the parable of the sower. And what a parable is, is a simple story to illustrate God's word. You know, in morals, what it is that we should do from a moral perspective. So the parable of the sower, Luke 8, 4 through 18. And when a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. Mm. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled under feet. Well, isn't that what happened when we have do stuff? When we didn't pack right, when we didn't do what we were supposed to, some stuff's going to fall by the wayside and the birds of the air devoured it. Well, isn't that what's going to happen? If you don't discipline your children, if you don't take care of your household, aren't things just going to fall apart and get devoured by what is evil in this world? And some fell on the rock. And as it grew up, it withered away. Well, you can't plant good seed on a rock. It must be grounded and rooted in good soil. So if you just tossing stuff anywhere, you're not taking care of it. You're not doing what it is that is required of you. How in the world do you expect to have a wonderful harvest time? That's not how any of this works because it had no moisture. If things are falling on rocks, there's not going to be any moisture. Good morning, Wanda. Good morning, Mia. Good morning, Willie, Jeffrey. It is just going to be where it just falls by whatever. And some people wonder, Lord, why is it that my child ends up being, you know, the bad one that goes to jail and, and doesn't do what they're supposed to, irresponsible, still living in your house? Well, it's because you didn't properly plant the seed. 
That's what it's all about. So as we go forth in this, it says, and some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. Oh my Lord, if I allow my children, I'm going to keep using children, you know, and that's us too as adults. If we surround ourselves, our circle ends up being people that are poisonous, some negative nay nay person every day, it will choke the life out of you. And then you won't be able to grow the way God has you to grow. Those children, if you allow them to stay out to one, two, three o'clock in the morning, mm, and you allow them to just make up the rules as they go. They're telling you what to do. Then, of course, they will get choked out by those wonderful and things that help us to understand this is wrong. And when I say wonderful, sometimes things have to choke us out for us to get back on the right path. So, you know what? We, we all fall short. We all fall short. So let's just continue on in the word. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. Oh my God. So let's think about this. So if I have discipline in my household, I've had discipline in the way I raise my children. I have discipline as to what not to allow in my circle. I have discipline as to what I will not tolerate. Oh my God, you mean to tell me I'm actually going to be planting good seed in good soil and I will reap a wonderful harvest? Oh my God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. So I'm going to stay away from throwing my seeds on rocks. I'm going to stay away from putting my things somewhere where it just falls by the wayside and I don't nurture it. I don't mold it. I don't put anything into it. And then I have an expectation for greatness in the end. It, I, okay, God. All right. I just have to do my part. So it goes back to the first passage, Psalm 126 and six, he who goes out weeping, bearing the seed of so and so it's not going to always be, you know, uh, roses and petals and chocolates. It's not going to be that. You're going to get up some days not wanting to do what you have to do. But then you got to keep going. You got to keep pressing. You have to keep doing what it is that God said you must do. Whether it is something you want to do or not. I cannot tell you. You know, my son and I, we, we butt heads quite a bit. Quite a bit. You know, wash those dishes. Take that trash out. That's your minimal responsibility in this house. If you see something else, then you just take care of it. So he has to understand that if you don't do these things and I have to keep yelling at you, then there will be no harvest season for you. So that's the way it is in life too. God looks at us as adults and some of us haven't been taught, but you can start now. You can start now by planting your seed on good soil and learning how to go forth and, and be great in everything. But sometimes you're not going to like it and that's okay because your season will come. Your season will come. It goes on to say in verse 9 of Luke 8. And when his disciples asked him what the parable meant, <laughs> he said to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. Have mercy. But for others, they are in parables so that seeing they may not see. <laughs> And hearing, they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. <laughs> the ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. Listen now. Listen. This is good stuff. So that they may not believe and be saved. Oh, my God. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no roots, my Lord. They believe for a while and in time of testing fall away. So you don't want to put your stuff on rocks. <laughs> and as for what fell among the thorns, well, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares of the riches and pleasures of life and their fruit does not mature my god and as for that mm, 
in the good soil. Let's talk about the good soil. They are those who hearing, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. Oh my God. I don't know who that spoke to this morning, but I thank God for helping me to understand that I shouldn't just throw my seed, let it just fall out my bag. I need to hold it up and get it to good soil. I need to nurture that thing. I need to discipline it. I need to speak good life over it. I need to be the one who shows God that he lives inside of me. Oh my goodness. And I should not allow my seed to fall amongst the rocks to get choked out because there's no moisture there. Do you understand what's happening here? You cannot expect to have a wonderful harvest if you haven't planted good seed on good soil. If you've just tossed it about, oh, today I'm just going to let them kids do whatever they want to do. Well, today I'm just tired. (laughs) Oh, well, you know what? That ain't my problem. If we get into that zone, then that means that our wonderful seed that could reap a harvest will get choked out will not get the nutrients, the nutrients that are needed in order to go forth. So I need you to understand the word today and understanding it's harvest season. Have you planted good seed in good soil? That's the message on today and breaking it down as to how we go about doing things. And the fact that the word tells me I'm going to go out weeping. There are going to be days that will be bad and I'm not going to want to. I just won't want to do it, but I must. And I got to keep pressing forward and do what God would have me to do. In that last passage, 16, verse 16. And uh, look for it says no one after lighting a lamp covers it up. Mm. <laughs> Father God with a jar and puts it under a bed. Why would you do that? Put but puts it on a stand so that those who enter may see the light. Oh my God, this all this just spoke to me this morning on all different level. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. (laughs) For it, I'm sorry, for to the one who has more will be given. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. How you hearing today? How you living? How are you planting your seed? How, how are you doing these things? Take up your responsibility and plant your seed in good soil. Luke 10 and 2 says, and then he said to them, them all of y'all me too (laughs) the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray earnestly to the lord of the harvest to send out labor laborers into his harvest so what does that say some of y'all not gonna do what you're supposed to it's true The laborers are few. They're there. They want to reap the benefits. It's almost like having, um, you know, some type of project that you may be doing for school or work or even an organization or, you know, some type of business. Everybody wants to be there at the award ceremony or when it's raise time or when it's some type of, you know, glorious benefit to uplift them. But what did you do along the way? Did you put the work in in order to be in this harvest season to reap that benefit? Have you done any of that? Because if you haven't, you can't come to the award ceremony. You won't be in the I'm getting ready to get a raise line. (laughs) Your children will be the result of you not disciplining. So I say to you today, how have you put forth the effort? 
and planting and putting your seed in good soil so that you reap a wonderful benefit. So you can't get something for nothing. <laughs> something for nothing. Ah, uh, That's not how any of this works. So I want to be an encourager on today. Plant good seed in good soil so that you deserve the harvest. You're not just there reaping the benefits of other laborers, the ones who put the work in. You get up. You do your part. You do the responsible thing. Add to what else you see the others doing. You know, I always say the faithful few in a church, hey, if you come to church, you can't just simply be a pew warmer. What is it that you bring? What do you bring to the table? When you go to work, are you doing what your able best is? Are you to be able to be recognized? You know, I, I look at, I have to use myself because, you know, that's what I know best. But with my job, it's very difficult. And sometimes I, I try to think outside of the box. Somebody made those rules and sometimes they need to be modified. But I'll go the extra mile because that's just who I am. And then these things are happening in the background that I don't know anything about. God has already aligned things for, for elevation, just like receiving the VP status. I didn't know that was coming. That came out of left field because I thought everything was falling apart. But I'm working. I'm doing. I'm giving. So if you put in the work, put in the work, no matter whether you're happy, sad, glad, whatever, just do it. And I assure you on the back end, God sees you in the season. He sees that you get up. He sees your press. He knows your body is tired. He understands that you have spoken to those kids five times and they still want to be hard headed. They understand that he understands that the day and everything is not going to make it easy. But how will you stand in this season? How will you go forth? How will your light shine? Everybody. That's right, Mia. We all have work to do. All of us. Because there are days that I'm just tired. I don't want to press. But I thank God for saying, you know what? That still small voice that says, get up and go every morning. Go and do whatever it is that I've said for you to do. And watch the harvest season. Oh, my Lord. I'm truly in a harvest season right now. I, my children are not the normal statistic right now. They're not the norm. Single parent household, going through a bad divorce, they were not supposed to be able to be eligible for college, to have even lived this long with the color of their skin. So trust me when I say it's harvest season for me and I'm not going to stop because there's yet another season for me and their work, the work is there. The work is there every single solitary day for the next level. So don't ever get comfortable. Continue to work. What seed have you planted to deserve your harvest? Are you riding off somebody else's coattail? Did you just show up as mayor to wave and kiss the babies? No, you get to work. You get your house in order. You discipline your children. You do what is necessary to get elevated on your job or to get elevated away from it to start that business or to get elevated to do what is necessary to write the book, to do whatever it is that God has planted on the inside of you. Did you put it in rocks? Did you let it fall by the wayside? Did you just get let it get choked out by the thorns of the ways of this world? Did you just not nurture it? Did you not water it? What are you doing today? So I just want to encourage each and every one of you that as long as you are in this season of having to sow your seed, put it in good dirt, nurture it, and do what you know you must in order to survive. That's all I have for today. Please take a moment and go back and read the parable of the sower. It comes out of Luke chapter 8, verse uh, 4 through 18. It is a beautiful story of morals. How are you living? How are you living? What have you planted that's good in good dirt? 
that you've nurtured. Ask yourself that today. Men, heads of households, what are you doing today? <laughs> and mothers who have been left to, to just carry the torch, you have a responsibility too. And God sees your, your work. It sees, he sees what you've had to do in order to make it, to raise the children, to keep a roof over their head. He sees it. So don't grow weary. Keep working because harvest season is coming. Will you deserve it? Will you deserve it? In Jesus' name, amen. So to God be the glory on this day. If you don't know him for yourself, I want to encourage you to get to know him. Get yourself connected to a Bible-based church institution, group, individual. Go to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. Read those passages. And if you believe it and there's a burning in your soul, I believe in that moment that you have been born again. And now it's time to get connected to what is right that's going to teach you what it is that you should be doing each and every day of your life. Oh, get a sword on today. Get a sword. And just, I promise, if you just flip it open to any page, God will guide you to whatever it is that you need. So trust him, go forth in him, love on him because the word is a beautiful thing. You can just flip it open. Ask God, what is it? What is it have you have for me today to help me be better, for me to grow, for me to be in my next level time, in my harvest season? Lord, I trust you. I wake every day and I say that because I don't know, but I trust him. And it doesn't matter whatever it is, whatever it is, Lord, I trust you that I will come through this season. I trust you even on the days when I'm tired and I roll out of bed and I sit there and I say, Lord, I trust you. That is in that moment where I'm tired, where I don't feel like sowing seed on that day. But he gives me what it is that I need to just keep pressing on. And Lord, I thank you on today. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for living within me and allowing my light to so shine that it may touch others and draw them closer so that they can see this wonderful thing that lives inside of me. So good seed today on good soil and watch your harvest season come in. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.